guys, Lisa here from Imagine Acre Wood. Today we're going to be talking about pasteurizing our goat's milk. So if you've watched some previous videos, you know that we got goats fairly recently. Today we're going to be showing you how we pasteurize the goat's milk. But before we go through it, I want to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already done so, please hit the notification button, and leave us a comment. Did that splat you in the face? <laughs> How's it taste? Oh my god! Okay guys, um, part of the process of pasteurizing milk is getting the milk. So I'm using nitrile gloves um, to keep everything nice and sterile and uh, also a cheesecloth over the bucket um, that's going to keep out any large debris. We just have several different layers to our process. I know you've probably seen lots more other processes of pasteurizing but we do several layers of protection when we are pasteurizing milk for um, for our family. You can already see some little small debris just from the wind sight breeze picking up. This would have been in the milk had there not been some cheesecloth here to protect this um, the milk from from all of this debris. Um, and then she's got much smaller udders than any normal goat or any typical goat. This keeps the milk when it slides down your hand. It keeps it from getting on your palms and getting into the milk bucket. So one more layer of protection while you're pasteurizing. The um, second part of it, and it's in several different steps, but it's all together. It's very quick. Um, we contained the milk. This is the milk that we've obtained from Mary and um, Trixie. And it's actually kind of a light day. So usually there's a little bit more. They're a little bit ornery on the, on the uh, stand, which can happen. But this is what we're working with. And that's one milking per day? We do one milking per day right now. We might be doing two once um, if we start to do other things with it. Once I learn to do more things, then that's what I recommend is upping your milking because then you're gonna have so much milk that you don't know what to do with it. So this is from one milking. We get a full one of these. It's about a little over a half gallon of milk. So, what we're going to do is pour this, we use a strainer, and it's just a normal strainer, something that you would actually use to keep the oil from splattering. I put a one layer of cheesecloth cloth over it, and then we're just going to try and slowly pour this in so it doesn't splatter. You have to go very slow. Just kind of let that drain. You can see that it's really doing its job. It's not just pouring straight through, it's settling and it's slowly dripping um, through into the bucket. And that's really what you want. I recommend doing a organic, non-bleached cheesecloth. And here's the, here's the main tip that I would say is get something where it says washable. Not all of them are reusable. It is cheesecloth can get pricey if you're having to continuously buy it. So if it says washable, then that's what I would look for. I bought mine on Amazon, um, and that's where I've been buying a lot of our products. Um, the best price and the best selection um, that I, we've, we've come across. So again, you can see how it's settling, and it's just slowly streaming through. And just a little bit at a time. You can't rush it or you would have like a giant mess. And trust me, this is like the fourth time we've done it, fourth or fifth time, and I had a huge mess to clean up. So, what we're gonna do now, after we strain it, I straighten now, some people strain it into a pot. What I do is I strain it straight into the, one of the jars because I don't have that much. Um, milk and it and it just go, makes the process really quickly. So I found it, it was make it harder on myself 
by doing putting this you know relatively small amount of milk comparatively to other um, other people who do milk um, and it's made the process a little bit faster but again you want to go fairly slow and this is how I lift the bucket because I am a shorter person I need to see where it's going so I lift it up at this angle so I can actually see that the milk is going in I'm not like you know t trying to peek my head around a bucket now, at least that filter is different than the cheesecloth, right? Yes, yes. Thanks for um, bringing that up. Yes, yeah, so this is a special filter specifically designed for milk. Um, there's also, this is a strainer, and this is something that you probably, if you've canned before or made jam or anything like that, this probably looks super familiar to you. Um, and it already has a filter underneath this white cloth filter. We can put this one on specifically to get any other fine bits. So anything that's like completely naked, I'm huffing and puffing, this is hard work. Um, anything that you just, you can't see, this filter is gonna take it out. It's an isotropic filter, guys. It's, um, it's made specifically for milk. Um, and I can't remember, I believe the brand we got was Schwartz's, but uh, they make different brands. But what you want is the, the isotropic milk filters. I'll show you the box here in a second. I've got it handy. It just so it's actually a pretty good amount. More than I always am amazed at how much milk we get. So oops. clean that up. These are the filters that we got. We did some research. This is one that had the best reviews. Um out there on the market and they're fairly inexpensive um, also on Amazon so I know guys too if you guys don't like Amazon I do know they have those in our local feed store um, our local co-op yeah, as well we do a co-op um, sometimes it's just hard for us to we're pretty out there so um, Amazon's been <laughs> really good for us but if you like to buy local which we try we really try to do um, local feed stores they should have it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just put this Guy, I'm just gonna actually set it right in here into the bucket. And then I'm gonna transfer over. You're gonna want to bring this up. Now this is, I use the smallest canning pot that I think pretty sure that you can get. Since I'm only doing a small amount of milk, I'm gonna go ahead and just place the whole jar in there. And then you want to Make sure that everything is pre-sanitized. So this has been sanitized the same way I sanitize the buckets, all my utensils. And what I do is I actually use boiling water. I fill it up halfway. I let it cool down. I sometimes will add a little bit um, of cool water to it, but it's just not cooling down quick enough. And a small, a few drops of Dawn. And then literally like just a few drops of bleach. Sounds kind of scary, but that's what I've read so far. That's the best way to completely sanitize any bacteria that's been left in from your last milking. You wanna make sure you rinse, rinse, rinse. Make sure you rinse very thoroughly. Um, and then you wanna make sure all your utensils are sanitized. So I whisk. A lot of people, I've seen them use a spoon, but I feel like this gets it going, especially since it's at a longer angle. It's not in a, just a bucket. This gets down in there and make sure all the milk is reaching the same temperature at the same time. Now guys, while that heats up a little bit, um, if you're wondering a little bit about the off-grid stove that we use here, um, this is a propane stove. Um, it's by Unique. It's Unique brand. And it has battery-operated um, ignition on the burners and the stove. Um, and it also has a boiler underneath. So uh, we're, we've been pretty happy with this stove since we've got it. Um, we liked the, uh, the seamless uh, grate up top where we can yeah. transfer pots around. And um, it's been a good stove for us so far. So if you guys are looking for an off-grid stove, um, we would definitely recommend this one as an option. So you want to get it up and it's going to take a little bit. It's going to take some time. Um, I would say at least, depend, like on this size jar, it takes me at least five minutes before I even start to check it with the thermometer. This, so right now, if I just kind of dip it down in there, you can see we've got a long way to go. And what temperature are you looking for, Elise? 
So I've heard some conflicting things. One says I've seen several um, research where it's 161 and then one says it's 165. I go with the 165 just because I want to be doubly sure that it's it's going to be completely um, any anything in there is going to be um, killed any any harmful bacteria. And you want to just hold that temperature for 15 seconds, super quick. So once you get it up to that temperature, keep it at that temperature for 15 seconds, and then immediately remove it from the um, from the boiling water. So Elise, why is it that um, that we pasteurize? So we pasteurize because, I mean, there is definitely benefits to drinking raw goat's milk. Um, but we pasteurize, one is because we've got this little guy in the way. Um, when you're pregnant, it's just really not a good idea to drink raw milk. Um, the risk is too high if there is something in the milk. Um, a lot of times, like, your body can kind of fight it off. Um, you may just feel a little sick or something, but when you're pregnant or you have young kids, um, it's just not a risk that we really want to take. Um, perhaps in the future, we may dabble into raw milk. I've had it. Um, I don't personally taste a difference. Some people say that raw milk tastes a little bit sweeter. I've had both. I think it all depends on the goat, um, and it, like the breed, and it also depends on how you're handling it, how, the, how you're handling the milk. Um, but we pasteurize just for peace of mind, pretty much. And um, just to be on the safe side, being that we, I am pregnant and that we've got young children. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15. So that's as easy as it is. I'm going to try and get it immediately off the heat. I kind of just slide it over where it's closest to me. Just trying to work quickly. Be very careful because this is extremely hot and anyone who's ever done any canning knows how hot this can get. So what we're going to do here is I have another setup here. We strain it again because anything that's sediment that's settled um, or any of um, really it's anything like pieces of hard milk that kind of accumulated in the pasteurizing process, we want to make sure that's not something that we're going to be drinking. And it's literally, you just want to be a little bit more cautious just because of the heat, but it's really the same process as before. And that is a new filter, <laughs> and that's been re-sanitized, just so everybody knows, those behind the scenes. So you want to make sure that you are using a new filter, not the same filter. Also, um, this will help it, the milk cool down much quicker because it's not sitting in a very extremely hot container. So what we did that's a little bit different, I'm just going to go ahead and remove that over. Um, we got these lids and these are just a lot more easier to use rather than if you're, because we're going to be using it daily. Um, it's not something that's going to sit on the shelf. So we just got these little... Um, these guys right here, they're wide mouth canning jars, um, and they just go over any wide mouth jar, um, and it just makes it a lot more user friendly, rather than using the original tin jar that it came with. So from here, I'm just gonna make sure that it's on there nice and tight. It's still pretty hot to the touch, so I'm gonna kinda use these guys. Sometimes it's not too bad, but it's still hot to the touch. I'm just gonna check it, make sure all of the threads are on that I'm not having any leaking. And what I do, it just I pop it right into the freezer. Now, I recommend using a stand-up freezer. We don't have it set up yet. You can see all of our display of, of mismatched stuff. Um, and then I just literally make sure I have a spot for it. Um, you'll notice at the very bottom, 
this guy right here is a is a um what is it called? An ice pack. <laughs> An ice pack. There we go. And I side one more on top. And I do notice, I mean, honestly, that it makes, um, it does make a difference. And I just kind of sandwich those in and that's it. Um, I usually leave it in there for about an hour. You don't want it to freeze unless you want it to stay frozen because then it's a process. You've got to wait a little bit of time um, if you're wanting to drink it in the next morning. But after it's in there for an hour, it goes straight into the fridge. And it lasts, once you pasteurize it, a week to two weeks. And that's usually what I've um, read. We go through it much quicker than that. So we, that lasts about two to three days for us. So we never hit that mark. If you're gonna, if you know you're gonna um, not drink it and it's gonna be sitting there, go straight to the freezer and leave it there and just mark it. Um, we don't have to do that because we don't have an overflow of milk yet. So hope this was really helpful for you guys. Um, let me know what your process is. If you have something else, a tip to add, we love to hear we're still growing, we're still learning, but this works for us. So I hope you liked it and hope it was informative. Thanks guys.